Namaste everyone. This is Rihanna and on behalf of everyone here at Apart But Not Alone, I'd like to welcome both old and new faces. Last week, last week Paul provided a deep insight into the healing and meditative properties of mandalas. In this week, we will begin with a short meditation led by Mr. Vikas Bajaj. Over to you, Mr. Bajaj. So we are going to start with another mantra today. This is a thankfulness mantra to all the teachers we have, to Paul, to all the teachers visible and invisible with us to learn this beautiful art. We are learning to art of healing and meditation. So if you're all ready, just sit straight, your spine erect, hands in the position of namaste, and just follow the words. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Asma Shri Guru Vinama. Take a deep breath in and focus on your breathing. The magic within, the breath. Follow the breath, how it collects all the air, oxygen, vitality from the universe and takes it deep inside you. Like every moment, you're bringing a new life, new opportunity, new sense of self with every breath we take in. And every breath out, every exhale, we have a potential to release all the past, all the pain, all the heaviness, all the toxins. Every breath is like a gift from the divine to live anew, to create anew, to look forward. With absolutely gratitude, with this magical power of breath, I would like you to start focusing on the process of your breathing now. With this process, I would like you to all, whoever can connect with and bring out one of the most beautiful memory of your life. Any relishing, happy, joyful memory, you have lived to the best of your ability and you were best of self in that moment. See it playing in your mind now as if it is actually happening right now. Feel, vision, witness all the things as if that happened then. And feel the joy, happiness, gratitude of that moment in your body now. Feel that vibration wherever you're feeling in your body. There must be some area of your body which is representing that memory as a vibration. Connect to that vibration. And see if it is coming in the soil in the process of waves coming and growing. It is the process of a vibration, just like your breath comes and goes. And this beautiful memory, you can trace it out where it is emerging from. And for that, I would like you to develop a magical vision. And you will see that vibration which is playing on that part is connecting with an animated thread. It may seem like music, it may seem like air, it may seem like a connection. But whatever you see, you'll be able to follow in world where this vibration is coming from. If it is like a rush of blood, you can follow the blood stream. If it is a musical symbol, you can follow the source of music. 
if it is a brush of happiness, you can reach where you're smiling inside. So just make a path in work. Keep following, keep following. And you'll reach a point. This vibration will have an origin place. You may find it in your tummy, in your gut. Or you may find it in your heart. Or maybe in your throat. Or maybe somewhere on your face. Maybe in the middle of your eyebrows. We all have one origin place of these memories. Focus on the point you found and focus how this emotion is coming out in the form of beats, vibration, or any form of emergence. And how with every breath, this focal point is shining like a beautiful white light, a spot which is making you so attracted to this source, this origin, this light. It is coming from within. And the more you are trying to focus on it, the more you want to get into it. As you keep focusing, keep connecting what emotions come in you realize now, the moment you connect with happiness, there are some colors coming out of it. Colors of happiness, colors of joy, colors of feelings. And these colors are spreading all directions. But your focal point is shining bright. Just like an inner sun, giving you beautiful healing light, so cozy, so comfortable. Connect with this light as much as you can and see your feelings, your energy centering to this point. And you're receiving a beautiful sense of energy all over your body. of refreshment, of new sense, of new sense of self. Contain this energy and start holding on to this point, knowing that always you can now easily follow this vibration and come to this center, come to this light within you, which you have just discovered. And now, I'm going to bring you back with here and now, so that with this newly discovered focus, mm -hmm. you can lead on to this beautiful art, which is now coming from the center of you. So now keep your both hands on a namaste position and focus on the chant. And when I repeat this chant to you, see this chant going straight into this light and this light shining more and more bright. Om Namah Shira Take a deep breath in and breathe out. And very slowly, all of you, open your eyes.
Thank you. Let's continue. And I'll hand it over to Ayush or Rihanna, who wants to take it. And uh, this is going to be Paul. Thank you, Vikas. Over to Thank you. you. Namaste. So welcome back for those of you that are coming back for the second time. If you hear kind of noise in the background, I'm sitting in an atrium on the island of Maui. <clears throat> happens to be the biggest mountains on earth. And right now there's a big tropical rainstorm. So you might hear some wind howling. So let's take a few moments to review what we did last week. The very first thing is the fact that a mandala is a visual prayer. It's a visual meditation. When you're looking at mandalas or drawing them like we're going to do, or even just the whole contemplation of the mandala itself, that is a meditation. In Buddhism, they have several kinds of meditations, but one of them, and that's what we're practicing tonight, is the through the eyes. We're gonna use through the eyes. We're gonna look at mandalas like I'm wearing, or I've got one over here. And it can start off with something very, very simple. Last week, we talked about putting a circle. Is if you remember, the circle stands for the feminine. And it also stands for the heart. And the square, we started off last week with just a blank square like this, just a very simple drawing. There's no artistic ability necessary here. You can just practice uh, our very simple drawing and we're gonna take it a step further this week. And then next week, we're gonna do a drawing that takes four weeks or some of you might take two weeks, but we're gonna do it over a four week period. And each week we wanna deepen it uh, slightly, slightly deeper. So the practice that we're going to be doing is something I started in the late 70s, early 80s, when my spiritual teacher asked me, as I started to do mandala painting, to take a circle and put it inside a square and just meditate on that. So I've been doing that for many, many years now, almost 35 years. So if you have the drawing, all you need is a square piece of paper. If you don't have a square piece of paper, a rectangle piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, anything will work. But it's easiest on a square because the square is the number four, which is a, is a very stable foundational number. Most houses are built square. You know, Not all, but most houses are built square. If you look at most Buddhist temples, or Hindu temples, their basic foundation is a square. So that's what we're starting with. And last week we drew lines along the side, as you can see here, if you can see this, we drew lines along the side. We found the center. Now finding the center of this little drawing is very same as finding the center of your own heart. In mandala teaching, the heart center, this is the heart center, is the center of all mandalas. Every mandala that's ever been painted, any color, any design, any shape, it's always a reflection of the heart center. So when you find your very little center on your piece of paper, and you can do this by either measuring across either way or by laying something diagonally across it, such as this, you go right across, you can't see this very well, but it's a diagonal across it, and you make a little mark in the center once you've centered, you know, my spiritual teacher always used to say, when I'd call him up and I was going through some kind of life issue, his response was always, have you centered? Have you centered? So every time you're dealing with a mandala or looking at a mandala, the basic foundation is you're centering yourself. And why is that important? Because in the mind, and especially in our world today, there's so much suffering. There's so much darkness. There's so we have. As a, as a world, we have problems right now. So for each of us, how do we deal with that? And in, in my work and the mandala work we're doing, it's not in here. There's a lot of problems with the mind and we're not gonna be talking a lot about the mind. We can all agree that there's a lot of stuff going on there. And so by moving down to the heart, by doing this mandala drawing, we're moving from here where there's chaos and clutter down to here where it's peace and calm. A lot of people, 
especially older people in life, if you offer, do you want a lot of money or do you, a lot of, you want peace and calm and health? I, for one, would choose peace and calm and health. And I think most people would. When they're, you're older, when you're younger, hey, you want the money. There's nothing wrong with that. So after we found the center last week, if you remember, this is the one thing you need. And if you don't have this, then you can use a cup, a saucer, a quarter, anything to make a few circles. And if you don't make the circles perfect, that's okay. You're, you're moving towards this practice. It's a very simple practice, similar like if any of you meditate with a mantra and you're saying the mantra over and over again, this is the same thing, only we're doing it visually. We're drawing a very simple mandala that we can use as a mantra. And so we put the part of the compass in the center and we did several circles around that. So if you're following us at home, you wanna find the center of the circle. You can either draw lines like borders like I've drawn here, like these borders. That's the usual in the mandala. If you don't draw that, that's okay. And we put several circles in there to find a center. That's basically what we did last week. And this is the process. If you would get up every morning or sometime during the day, and you would just simply look at this, you just look at this. And if you look at this for more than a few seconds, you'll see that it's not just lines on a paper. There's something happening here. The In mandala teaching, we say, the circle in the middle of the square creates a dynamism. And what is a dynamism? It's when energy comes. It'd be like if you have a pet, like a dog comes in the room, you feel an energy, especially if you love that dog. Or if you meet somebody in the world that you really have a connection with, there's energy. That's a dynamism. And it's the same thing in the mandala here with these concentric circles and the square. We're creating a, a dynamism. And why is that important? Because once we have a dynamism, we have a potential to change consciousness. Now changing consciousness is important because when you're going through stuff here and stuff around the world, and I know in India and in the United States, and I have family that lives in other continents, there's a lot of stuff going along. So for us individually to move away from this to the center, that's what this dynamism does. It moves you towards your heart center. This may only be 18 or 20 inches, but trust me, it's a lifetime process and it's a practice. And so we're starting this very individual practice. And you know, you talk about what the Buddha would say, and he would say like, there's a journey of 10,000 steps. It always starts with one step. This is the start of that journey. This is what I personally did 30 plus years ago and today I've created mandalas that they're all over the world. This house, this beautiful house in Hawaii has got several paintings, not only of me, but some for my students hanging up because it's a house of peace. It's a house of transformation. So that's why the dynamism is important. And the dynamism leads us to our heart center. Okay. That's kind of a review a little bit about the teaching from last week and the teaching at the present. So we're going to take this a step further, okay? I could do it on this one, but I want to do it with you. If you're working at home, I will try to be slow, clear, and concise so you can follow me. And once this is done, hopefully this is, you're taping this so you can go back and replay it. And uh, uh, that would be a good thing to do. If not, eventually it'll be available for you. So if we go back, if I do, I'm going to do exactly what? I'm teaching you to do because we're making this practice now. We're going to work towards our heart center. We're, we're much calmer. And there's a strength here you don't have in here. And it's very healing. It can eliminate suffering. It can also lower intensity. It can relax you. It just changes your consciousness when you're doing. Carl Jung is a famous uh, psychiatrist therapist, one of the, the leaders in the, in, in the whole idea of, of discovering the inside from a Western perspective. And when he discovered, he went to India when he was a young man and he discovered the mandala. And when he got home and he was well into his practice, he did a mandala every morning for many, many, many years to calm him, 
to center him and get him ready for the day. So I've read all his books and his teaching. There's a book called Mandala Symbolism by Carl Jung. That's J-U-N-G, Jung. And it's a wonderful little book that anybody can do. And it really shows you how deep these little drawings can be. So once we have a square like this, or a square with a little line, I put the little line on to make it a little bit of border. This is what I do in almost all mandala paintings because it, it takes place. This is kind of in our outer world. That's what this represents. And we're going to go now to, into our inner world. And it's completely unknown. They say that the inner world is vaster than the outside world. And so when, once you start exploring this, this is a doorway or a portal into your inside world, into anybody's inside world. The Tibetans have known this for at least 6,000 years. They've been practicing this. And throughout Hinduism, you see the mandala in the circle all over the place. And in American Indians and in Australia Aborigines, it's a universal symbol. So once, if you have a piece of paper ready, you can just draw a little line around the outside with a little ruler. I'm just using a piece of paper here that's got a hard edge. You could use this to just lay it down Try to make it, and you can do that. Try to make it parallel to the side. So you lay this down, line it up, and just do a nice little line. It probably helps when you're learning to do a pencil because you can erase it. I'm only using a pen here because it shows up on the screen better. So if you're doing this and you want to follow up, you can do this and make a nice line around the outside. Now, if, you're, if you don't have a ruler and you wanna sketch with a pencil and just make a sketch, that works also. The good thing about making a sketch is you can later look at it and when you have the right tools, turn that into a much more precise drawing. One of the things about the mandala is it, it brings you to very precise focus. So when you're, do you're doing this practice, some of the side benefits will be healing, will be calmness. You'll have a better understanding of your own inside. And you will, it's like if you could take your eyes and turn them around and look inside, this is what this practice is about. It's 100% safe, it's ancient, and it's simple. Anybody can do it. You don't have to be an artist, creative, or anything. You can do this whether you're 10 years old or 90 years old, it does not make any difference. So what we're gonna to do today is we're going to find the center. So if you have any way to find this, you can measure it, or I'm gonna put this down diagonal to diagonal and make a little cross. in the center. So I found my center. I'll show it to you in pen so you can see it together. Okay, that's the center. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can measure this way, which is the radius, or measure this way that's a diagonal. That's why having a square makes it so much easier. If this is a rectangle, it's a little bit more tricky to find your center, but a rectangle works good. A lot of Tibetan art, Hindu art, are in rectangles with mandalas at their center. So after we found, we, we, we've done this very simple thing. We're gonna do the same thing we did last week. Now, if you don't have a compass, then use a plate, a dish. And you know, if you, if you have nothing, just try to draw a nice circle, even that works. There's stories about some of the Renaissance artists that practice so much that they could draw an absolutely perfect circle without a compass. Now I've tried that. I prefer the compass. Artists always go better with tools. And this is our tool. This is all we need and a piece of paper. So as we did last week, very quickly, make a few circles. Might be kind of easy and you don't have to make them a certain way or shape. It's just anyway, maybe this, this dark one might work better. Let's see if I can get this one working. Looks like the same color. 
Okay, so just make a few circles in there. This is what we're going to start with today. In the coming weeks, we'll spend a lot of time and we'll make a very beautiful mandala. And you may even have, we may even have time together to color it all in. So it doesn't make a difference how many lines you use, but make some lines. Remember, if you're using a plate, try to make it as centered as you can. If you don't have a compass, you could buy one of these on Amazon very, very inexpensively. But it really helps. A compass like this will last you your whole lifetime. This will last you a whole lifetime. This little compass here, this little thing can change your life. It's been around for a long time. And anybody that does mandalas uses these, or we have much bigger ones when we do bigger projects. Somebody said, how big is the biggest mandala you've made? 80 inches. It's seven feet. I don't know how many centers, that's a lot of centimeters, but eight feet by eight feet. This, I've done a couple of very huge mandalas. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like now. This is where we left off last week. Very simple. And if your mind is saying, oh, this is nothing, this is a little simple thing, and that, you know, you can't listen to that. This is a very, yes, it is simple, but it can have a profound effect on you. And it is something that's been used for a long time. And it's tried and true. And it absolutely works. Whether you know it or not, whether you think it or not, but by doing this practice, it has the ability to change your consciousness so fast. Like any of you out there, if you could come and I was sitting with you for two weeks and we did mandala practice every day, at the end of two simple weeks, you'd be a completely different person. You would learn and know things that you don't know right now. And I've seen this, I'm done, I'm in a practice here. People have come from 3000 miles away to come and practice with me for 10 days here in Maui at this retreat center that I, I've been teaching at here for 10 years. And during COVID, I've been here four times in the last four months because there's a lot of people interested in learning this stuff. And I plan to come here maybe five times uh, this next year. Okay, so we have this. We're ready to start now going forward. So how do we put things in this? How do we make the mandala? Okay, there's a simple process. So I'm going to take you through it. You can either watch me or come back. You need a straight edge now. A ruler is best. I don't have a ruler around here. I just have a little straight edge. It's a little, and I'm just going to use this because anything's straight. If you're sitting somewhere and you don't have a straight edge, the side of a package, um, Anything will work. So you're gonna start off with the four corners and you're gonna put this down in the middle of it and you're gonna put the across. This is called the diagonal. If you haven't learned this in school, if you're young, you will learn it. It's called the diagonal. This is the diagonal. And over each one of the circles, I'm gonna make a mark. Okay, do you see that mark? That's to this corner diagonal towards the center. Okay, now you're gonna ask, why am I doing this? And I can answer it a little farther down. So after you've done one, do all four now. Do that one, do this one, and do this one, and then we'll come back. I'll do it. We're doing this together. It's not hard. And you're making the little mark right where it crosses the circle. And if you want to make it all the way out one line, that you could do that too. But it makes it a little harder once we do designs, because that's what we're headed to. We're headed to designs. So this is now, I've got two of them on there. I'm making two more. You know what I'm going to need? A shot of that water. I think I got a kind of taste in my mouth. It's amazing when you talk in front of an audience, your mouth dries up. Okay, so here's the, we're halfway done now. We just marked the diagonal. You'll understand why once we do the, the radiuses. And the radius is you can do a ruler, but there's an easier way. If you measure from here 
to the center line. From here to the center line. See this marker here? That is the radius. I've marked it. It goes here to the center line. Once you've done that, you line up in the middle of this. You, if you have a ruler, you can measure it, make a dot. But what you're going to try to do is take this marker to the middle to the side and slide it over. After I made this mark, this is the radius right there. So then I go and I slide it over. Let's see, you slide it over. Can you see this? So here's the mark on the canvas. Here's my mark. I put that from the side. That's the mark of the center. So if you slowly slide that to this side, you make a mark on your canvas. Do you see that this mark and this mark are the same from the side. That's called the radius. So once I have that mark, I can draw just like we've done before. And whether you're doing an eight foot wide mandala or a little drawing like this is exactly the same technique. So you could go this and do the other side. You know how much the mark is. So you just slide this over to the other side. So in other words, you just don't need a ruler, you just need a straight edge. So we're almost done now. We've got three of them on there. We have to get the fourth one. It's a little to the left of it. So measure the other side, put a mark on your ruler and draw the lines in. There it is. Some of you might be doing this for the first time. I've probably done this 10,000 times. Um, this is the beginning of the process of making a mandala. We put, we started off with the square, we made the circles, and then we've just done the diameters. There's two diameters. And we've done the radius. The radius means from the side to the center. There's four radiuses. Okay. Or you could say there's two if you go all the way across or up and down. Now, the reason we do this is because when you start to do something in the circle, you need a boundary. That's what these are. So the, so when you make designs in here, it always comes out circle. You're always making designs in mandalas. And if you look at that one, let's see, it's over my left shoulder. If you look at it, according to you, you're going to see it over my right shoulder. So my left, this is where you go with this. This is a mandala that was painted by one of my students and she's working on today. She's almost finished. But when she laid this painting out back there, back there, right there, this is how she laid it out. This is how you lay it on the canvas, with, whether it's 10 feet or two feet or 10 inches. And the important thing is <clears throat> next week, once we start actually, we're gonna make a beautiful mandala. Today we're talking about what we're going to do to make it. We're going to start out this. I, I heard that last week some of you went ahead and drew mandalas and that's great. Do 10 of them, do 50 of them, do five of them, do one of them. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're actually, you're meditating with your mind, with your eyes and with your body all in one kind of a coordination. And you can't just space out and start thinking about your checking account or the news of the world, you have to, you have to stay focused. So next week, <clears throat> we're going to take this a little farther. We go, we've got some good time left, but we're going to, next week, we're going to make a whole template finished that's ready to color in. So if you're playing well with this next, uh, if you're playing around with this tonight and you want to go deeper, have a couple of these ready for next week. And we can start with this 
And I don't know how far some of you will go. I'm hoping one day when we're finished, after we've done our six lessons, this is number two, that you'll be able to send some of the pictures in. We'd love to see them. And we can also, I can also see in the pictures what's going on inside yourself, because this is revealing. This is almost a, a revealing of what's happening inside that you're normally not aware of. When my Buddhist teacher used to come by and look at the paintings, he used to bow to every single painting and he'd honor it because he knows that it's some kind of a sacred journey for that person that has taken the time to do the painting. It's revealing that their path through life. That's what a mandala is. It's like a signpost on your path through life. And one of the beautiful things about the mandala, it has absolutely zero, nothing to do with any religion. This doesn't take away from Buddhism, Christianity, being a Sikh. It's, it's all the same. This is outside that. This is spirituality. This is a meditative practice that every single religion has a basis of some form of self-development and meditation. And that's what this is. And it's a very simple one. And when I was a young man, I searched, I went to gurus, out, I went all around the world many times. And I finally found the mandala when I was in my early 30s. And it has completely and totally changed my life and given me a whole new way of living and sharing and being that without it, I would never know. Okay, so here we're going to go. Okay, next week, we're going to learn how to precisely make them. So everybody can make this. I'm skilled at it. So I'm going to draw some things out for you very easily. And this will show you how where we're going. So if you take, let's just take one circle in here. It doesn't matter which one. And just by your eyeball, go around the circle and mark a middle line. I'm just going to take one of the ones in the middle. A middle line means do a rough sketch of the middle. So around this line here, between here and here, I put a mark right there. Between here and there, I put a mark there. Now, if you have a ruler and you want to measure that and be super precise, fine, not a problem. The bigger you get, the more precise you have to be. The reason we've done this is because we're going to put some kind of a design in here, and we want it to come back equal all the way around. So now I'm going to do a little thing, and this is the very basic Tibetan. In this mandala here that I'm wearing, this is the very essence of what I've done on this mandala. You're going to learn it. So if those marks that we just made, if you put your pen or pencil or whatever on that mark we just made and make an S curve towards the other side. I'm going to make this very dark so you can see it. See, we just put that mark on there. We made an S curve. And you can make that S curve. Now we're going to go around and make that exact same simple curve. It'll get easier and easier. On every one of those marks, we made eight, mark, eight marks. We're going to make eight S curves. Just take it to an A. You try, to, you try to make them all the same, but if they're a little different, it does not matter. It's irrelevant. So we're, we're going to make eight S curves. Oh, goodness, I don't glasses. I don't need it. Okay, see? That's eight S curves. We're dealing with the numbers which is very standard in, in Buddhist philosophy. We're dealing with four and eight. Eight directions, four radiuses, and four sides. So these are some of the basic numbers we're doing. Okay, you can see that? Anybody can do this. Now next week we'll do a template and I'll show you how to make a template. So every one of these are exactly the same. It's very easy to do them exactly the same. So now what we're going to do, it might be hard on the first one, but remember, if you're using a pencil, how easy it is to erase it. I'm using a pen so you can see it better. Pencils are fine at home, but here I want to use a pen. So now we make the opposite. We make the opposite.
So I made the opposite. You see how this one here and this one here are opposites. And we'll show you how next time to how to make those exactly perfect. But for now, we're just practicing. This is a little bit of a meditation. Just go around now and make the opposites. And if it looks crude or you're not doing it right, that's okay. It's not a problem. This is just the practice. This is a practice. So I'm going to go here and very carefully make eight marks. I remember the, if some of you have ever heard of the great artist Picasso, if he did anything, even drawing on a napkin, he would always sign it. And in Eastern philosophy, which is what we're into, you don't sign anything on the front, you only sign the back. It's only the Westerners that sign the front because they wanna own it. In the Eastern, the philosophy is you don't sign it because you give it to the divine or whatever your belief of a higher consciousness, a higher power. I like what Joseph Campbell said, it comes in, in a thousand faces. Whatever your beliefs, it works right in with this. It's, they coincide 100%. It doesn't take away from anything that you've learned. It's just an addition. Like if you get a new shirt, it makes your wardrobe. It adds it better. That's the same thing with this. So look what I've done here. How simple is that? I've made it into now what mandala painting we call lotuses. And what is a lotus? I'm going to make this circle a little darker so you can see it. Those of you that have kids, if you draw this out, you can give it to your kids, let them color it in. It doesn't matter if they do it good, it's the fact that they love to color. Every kid's an artist. The problem is keeping an artist as he grows up. The whole technology world just sucks you right in. You borrow money, you owe money, you gotta work. It's very hard to be an artist when you grow up. Okay, so there's what that is. This is the basic foundation for all mandalas is the lotus. What this represents, what this little thing we did, just this little thing in a half an hour, we made a lotus. Now, why is a lotus important? What this is a symbol of, if you picture a flower right here, this is, this is a, remember we talked last week a little bit, I don't wanna have the time to go into it this week, but this was considered the masculine, this was considered the feminine. This is where the square is, all women know that men are square. Men that are square, no women are a circle. It's, it's gone on since the beginning of time. Anyway, we've taken a circle here. And if this was a flower, and in the east it's the lotus, and in the west it's the rose. If you take the lotus and you had to show a lotus opening up, like the petals of a flower unfolding, this is how we do it. We, we let the lotus open up. And this is how we symbolize that. Each of these petals are the heart center opening up. And why is that important? Because when you open the heart center, it draws you from the mind away to the heart. And in the heart, in my experiences, that's where healing is. That's where safety is. That's where calmness is. That's where truth is. Every single one of you have a purpose in life and it's buried in my experience, in your heart. You have to be able to open this up to find it. In my practice, you don't find it in here. And there's a lot of good. The, listen, the mind is miraculous. Some people say this is the most complicated thing in the entire universe. Yes, it is. And it has a lot of good attributes. We're not dealing with that right now. We're dealing with the heart center, moving from the masculine to the feminine and opening up us up to a healing potential. Somebody that's not feeling well, somebody that has you know, cancer, hopefully you're in stage one, you've caught it early. This kind of practice can alter the arc of your life. It's a healing practice. So when we, when we do this, I'm opening up my heart center. Can you imagine if, little, if every child in the third grade or fifth grade when they're young, we, we, they talked about opening up their heart center. And what does it mean to open up your heart center? It's a whole new world in here. I could talk for a month about the heart center. And how do you open up the heart center? This is how we're doing. This is what we are doing. It's not hard, it's simple. This little thing right here 
is a healing image of wholeness that can tie all the loose ends of your life. We all have loose ends. Everybody, you know, maybe Paramahansa Yogananda doesn't, but the rest of us, we, we have it. And so this very simple practice is how we begin to open up the poss possibility and the potential of the heart center. Namaste. Anything more you'd like me to add? Thank you very much, Paul. Namaste. Namaste. Thank okay. you very much, Paul. Namaste. Thank you very much for this beautiful understanding of opening up the lotuses inside. Right. Uh, I would like to close with the similar meditation. I would like you all to please keep the lotuses right in front of you. What Paul has beautifully suggested us to make. Just keep the lotus in front of you. And while watching this lotus, just keep staring at the center. And whenever you feel like closing your eyes, close your eyes while looking at the, that lotus. When you close your eyes, the lotus will still remain in your mind. Feel that lotus right inside your heart. And as I chant this closing mantra to you, feel the petals open. And a beautiful center is shining the lights and the petals opening of your own consciousness. Oh, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti Allow that lotus to spread and with that whenever you're comfortable you can open your eyes. I now hand it over to Ayush. Thank you very much. Namaste. Uh, namaste everyone. Um, my name is Ayush. And I'd like to thank you for being in the session today. Um, I'd also like to thank Paul and Vikas for raising the vibrations and energy in today's session. It was truly magical. Um, we, we will be sharing a form with you to collect feedback on how we can make this experience better for you. For the next week, please bring a paper, pencil, compass, ruler, and colors of your choice as we will be working on deepening the mandalas over the next four weeks. Thank Thank you and take care. Thank you, everybody. And I do want to share that we have a surprise giveaway today. We are sending a mandala color kit to a lucky winner who is Anju Bahari. We just took out a name. And so I will be reaching out to you, Anju, for your address and we will have something shipped to you. So we hope to see you all next week and take care. Thank you, Paul, Ayush, Rihanna, and Vikas. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you.